The Great Arcanum The Secret of Secrets At the heart of every great mystical and religious tradition persists a secret, a great universal truth. The Great Arcanum A Great Deep Secret Mystery Throughout history, it has been expressly forbidden to reveal the secrets of the Great Arcanum to the public, for it was a heresy, a person who practiced or had knowledge of hermetics. Thus its mysteries have remained a hidden legacy, veiled behind mystical stories and the world's inheritance of art and literature. For all to admire, some to imitate, but few to understand. Hidden in Egyptian monuments, under the gaze of the Vedic gods, between the lines of old books of alchemy, and intriguing us from the midst of the Aztecs and Mayans. The essence of the secret doctrine has always been there. Throughout the history of humanity, only a select few were initiated into the mysteries of this great universal truth, and those few guided the rest of the humanity and gave them the outward symbols of that truth as guidance. For the great arcanum, the secret of secrets, was fiercely protected and offered only to those who have proven their moral purity and trustworthiness. But as humanity entered the Dark Age, the divine knowledge went underground to survive in few areas around the world. For many centuries, the Great Arcanum has been calling to humanity from behind the stories and myths that veil it. The knowledge it delivers is universal and applies to all true religions and mystical traditions. Whether it is the serpent of Adam and Eve from the Judeo-Christian tradition, the serpent of the Aztec tradition, the serpent climbing the caduceus of the Greek god Hermes, or the serpents of the Hindu or Buddhist traditions, all these symbols contain the same teachings. Finally, after centuries of darkness and ignorance, the time has come for this hidden doctrine to be revealed. All religions are precious jewels on the golden string of divinity. The word religion derives from the Latin root meaning union. The word yoga is derived from the Sanskrit root yug, which also means union. At their base, the different traditions of the East and West describe the same goals, union with divinity. Religious traditions provide the map that one must follow in order to reach unification with the divine. Every religion seeks to express the same core knowledge, but one needs the right tools in order to read the map. With the right tools and their proper use, any religion or tradition may enter into the direct, experiential knowledge of the Divine. It could be said then that there is truly one science, one path, but appearing with different names and faces. For narrow is the gate and straightened the way that leads to life, and they are few who find it. In Greek, the narrow path is called Gnosis, which means knowledge. In Hebrew, the same narrow path is called Da'ath, which also means knowledge. This path is represented by the famous tree of knowledge in the book of Genesis, and the clue to entering the direct experience of God can be found through understanding the symbol of the tree of knowledge. to those with eyes to see and ears to hear. The Old Testament appears to be basic spiritual instructions in the form of stories and histories, yet in truth it is a vehicle of the secret knowledge. Although of Jewish lineage, Moses was raised to be an Egyptian pharaoh and was trained in not only the hidden wisdom of Egypt, but also that of his native Judaism. The civilization of ancient Egypt is amongst the longest lasting in the history of humanity. 
and rich with immense knowledge in the ancient world. Judaism was directly influenced by two of the oldest civilizations on record, those of Sumeria and Babylonia, civilizations famous for their mystery schools. Schooled in the hidden teachings of these ancient traditions, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible in Hebrew and in code, as was the tradition. Thus, every story and name contained in the books of Moses hides a deeper meaning. As it says in the mystical Hebrew book, the Zohar, the narratives of the doctrine are its cloak. The simple look only at the garment that is, upon the narrative of the doctrine, more they know not. The instructed, however, see not merely the cloak, but what the cloak covers. The Bible is symbolic. The characters and events of the Bible are a cloak that veils a real message. The inner knowledge has been hidden, or in the case of Christianity, rejected entirely. The Bible, like all great religious books, has been interpreted literally. Even Jesus taught both a public and secret doctrine. To you, it hath been given to know the secrets of the reign of the heavens, and to these, it hath not been given. Those who received the secret teachings were persecuted and forced to take the knowledge underground. As a result, the modern church has inherited merely the cloak. In addition, the Bible has undergone repeated editing by those without any knowledge of its secrets. Even though the modern Bible has been greatly disfigured, it is still infused with the ancient secret doctrine. However, the many levels of meaning hidden in the Hebrew letters are not visible in the modern language versions of the Bible. For example, the very first words in the Bible in Hebrew are Bereshit bara Elohim. The common literal translation is In the beginning God creates. But in the Hebrew translation found in the Zohar reads In wisdom Elohim creates. Elohim is a Hebrew word the root El is Hebrew for God and is masculine. The feminine form for El is Eloah, which means goddess. Elohim is plural, thus meaning gods and goddesses, male and female. In contrast to the image of a bearded old man, God is established in the first three words of the Bible as androgynous, containing both male and female. The word Elohim has many meanings. In one sense, it refers to angels, the governors of creation. These divine beings are male and female, in the image of their creator. This is clearly illustrated in most ancient images of angels, showing them to have the attributes of both man and woman. In the Bible, the angel that oversaw the creation of humanity is called Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah Elohim formed man from the dust of the earth. He blew into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Jehovah is another important name of God. Jehovah is comprised of four Hebrew letters Yod, He, Vau, He. Yod or Yah can be translated as male or phallus, Adam. Heva or Heve is female, mother or uterus, Eve. Even the name Jehovah contains both masculine and feminine forces. God created man in his own image, in the image of Elohim. Created he them, male and female, created he them. The angel Jehovah formed man in his image, androgynous. And so, as recorded in the esoteric heart, of all great religions, humanity, symbolized by Adam, was once androgynous, containing both male and female. Jehovah Elohim planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and placed there the man whom he had formed. 
Eden is a paradise of perfection. Eden is symbolic of the innocence and happiness that was once the natural state of humanity. The humanity of Eden was pure, knowing only goodness and virtue. As reflections of God, humanity embodied the seven virtues of the soul. According to esoteric wisdom, there exist seven fundamental dimensions. Do you not know how Allah has created the seven heavens, one above the other? The ascent and descent through these realms by the beings that inhabit them is represented in the Bible by Jacob's Ladder. The Bible states that when Jehovah Elohim created Adam, he placed Adam in the Garden of Eden. Esoteric wisdom states that this is the fourth dimension, the world of vital energy. Though happy in its innocence, humanity as symbolized by Adam needed to grow spiritually. Thus Eve was separated from the body of Adam. Jehovah Elohim took one of the hermaphrodites ribs, then closed up the flesh. Then Jehovah Elohim made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the hermaphrodite man she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of the man. This process of separation presented symbolically in the Bible was gradual. The human hermaphrodite was separated into two sexes, male and female, so that they may see themselves better, to know themselves. Since that time, man and woman have sought to reclaim their missing unity, which is the root of the craving for sexual connection. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother, and be united with his wife, and they shall be one flesh.